Okay, so we're going to put this nozzle, the single center nozzle, in here. It drops in, seats the O-ring. Now to put a gas tight seal between the back of the nozzle and the inlet. This is your inlet. The inlet again has a that's a 3 8 inch hole that matches the 3 8 inch hole in the nozzle. And then we have this little plate which slips over, pushes against this mating surface and locks this surface and the nozzle surface together. Make your gas tight seal there. We have a little bit thicker O-ring. This is an eighth inch O-ring that drops in like so. And then this inlet butts up against it. And then we put in our four retaining quarter inch machine screws. Put some squashing pressure on the O-rings. That'll make a gas tight seal. Important thing is make sure you simply account for gas leaks every step of the way. And this is about the simplest way I know of, of putting together a very simple uh, replaceable nozzles. You could probably get by with making the inlet and the nozzle or the nozzle holder you could make this inlet and your nozzle body you can make those out of, with one piece right here and then just make the copper tip replaceable and that would eliminate one of the joints but this should work as well too Now to assemble your slotted brass and bronze piece. I made this out of two pieces, a brass body and a bronze ring threaded onto the brass body. Again, you put a 16th inch or very thin O-ring up front. So that drops down into the slot with your, your nozzle outlets have to be pointed down so the gas goes into the rotor section. Put another eighth inch O-ring on the back side. And then we have a slightly modified inlet which has the center cut out to match the three quarter inch threaded back side of the brass. So that slips over the brass. Again pushes up against the O-ring. Squashed O-ring providing the seal. You can seal it with silicone if you want. Silicone sealer. I like O-rings. And these inlets are threaded for quarter inch pipe. That way you can put on quarter inch hose barb like that and, and attach a 
rubber hose to that, high pressure rubber hose. You want to use high pressure hose. Because if you're running 150 psi through there, a standard hose will, after a while, explode. As it fatigues, it will eventually explode like I've had it happen. So that's all it takes to put your inlet assembly together. And then I cut this ring to create a clockwise rotating rotor so it fits on like so. If you were to flip it over, you'd have a counterclockwise rotating ring or a rotor. But I've cut this specifically. There's a little difference between the bottom and the top centers, so there. It just fits in exactly, perfectly between your, your main half-inch studs that are holding everything together. Here you have two inlets of two types. Now on this turbo generator you could put a, as many as four inlets onto this turbine by simply duplicating what I've done and 180 degrees. You could go 90 degrees and then 180 degrees from that and put a total of four inlet nozzles, but I think we have plenty of nozzle here for powering this size hot rotor. If you were, if you wanted something more around 5 or 10 horsepower, you'd stack on more discs under your hot rotor section, then you might want to go up to as many as for inlet assemblies so you could modulate your inlet your inlets but even at 10 horsepower or more you could go 100 horsepower with a single nozzle uh, Tesla was running all of his turbines and he had a 100 horsepower 110 horsepower another 200 to 300 horsepower 18 inch turbine and he just used single inlets for those. So you can, however, by putting more nozzles on, you can drastically increase the efficiency of the system by uh, having different sizes and shapes of nozzles like we're showing here. And you can just have a computer turn on and turn off various nozzles depending on the speed and the load of a hot rotor. As your load goes up, you have to put more energy into the system so you turn on more nozzles. So you can really fine tune these turbines for really, really high efficiency with a very simple principle of multiple nozzles. That's the approach we're taking. Uh, some people have made variable nozzles to change the efficiency but variable nozzles are kind of complex and I would rather just have non-moving parts. There's a lot less complication and you simply use uh, electro uh, electronic solenoid valves to turn simply turn on and turn off your inlets. On top of the bearing assembly we have a cap and that uses a an O-ring and sealant and you can see the holes in here to put your screws in to tighten the cap down. That keeps the gas, especially when it's water, steam, keeps that steam from getting into the bearing assembly. On top of here we have the the outlet nozzle. This is your outlet nozzle. It's a half inch plate of aluminum with a slot cut to match the ring. 
And then this is an outlet tubing, 3 inch tubing, that was press fit into the plate. And then the other day we showed uh, our grandsons, we were doing a demonstration on TIG welding. We TIG welded the joint, which was, you call it an outside corner, but it's, a, it's an outside corner on the inside of the assembly. And this is your TIG weld we put between the outlet tubing and the plate. And by the way, this is very difficult stuff to weld because half-inch aluminum plate draws the heat off so quickly you need really good, really good welder to do it. We have a very good welder that we've reviewed from Avortech, which gives you more than enough power, and it gives you the features that you need for welding, but yet not putting too much heat into aluminum because aluminum can very easily be melded into a puddle. I've done it a few times with welders. I've I've actually put so much heat into this half-inch aluminum, it's melded into a puddle. To prevent doing that, you have a pulsing system on modern inverter welders, inverter types, that allows you to drive an enormous amount of welding energy in with a pulse, and then let the material cool down a little bit between the pulses, between the welds, so you're not just building up, building up heat. Aluminum melts at 1200 degrees. Uh, steel is more like 26, 2700, somewhere in there. So once you get the aluminum up to a heat to weld it, there's very little leeway before you get to where you're melting it into a puddle. It's not like steel. It's very difficult to weld. I'm developing a new welding system specifically designed to weld aluminum at much higher rates and which with much better results uh, with your welding. So this piece drops on top of here. I use quarter inch machine screws to bolt this down like so and that completes the assembly. You put a little bit of high temperature I use this stuff ultra copper high temperature automotive silicone sealer I'll put that down in these slots to finish off the gas seal on your your hot rotor ring and once that's cranked down trim off the excess and this turbo generator is done ready for testing ready for testing we'll test it before we seal it just to make sure everything's working right and we don't have to modify anything so that's it on the new turbo generator modifications, improvements, and we'll let you know how this works. Go to our website to find out how everything turns out. And until then, we'll catch you later.